Fluoride in drinking water has been a topic of conversation lately, but what does it really mean and is it really needed? So here to talk more about how fluoride impacts dental care is Dr. Siobhan Nelson from local nonprofit community dental health care. Thanks so much for joining us this morning, yeah, Dr. Thanks Nelson. For me. So let's start with this. Can you walk through the benefits of using fluoride? Because this has been something that people have been using for quite some time now. Yes, yeah, so absolutely. So fluoride essentially prevents or makes teeth more resistant to the effects that cause cavities. So to get into the chemistry of that a little bit, the outer layer of our teeth known as our enamel is made up of a crystal structure with minerals in mm -hmm. it. Minerals are constantly being pulled out of the teeth and then replaced. So anything we eat, the acid from that pulls minerals out of the enamel. Then as we take breaks from eating, our saliva replenishes those minerals. Um, so for individuals who are eating more often, it's gonna break down faster. Right. So when you get more breakdown, then you do rebuild, that's when cavities form. So what fluoride does is it incorporates itself in the outside layer of that tooth, making it more resistant to that acid breakdown, less likely to get a cavity. And this can be particularly important for individuals who say have dry mouths, so they don't have as many of those minerals in their flora or in their saliva to start, mm -hmm. or individuals like kids who are constantly snacking and eating particularly higher sweet foods. This sure. can be really instrumental in helping prevent decay for them. And across the community, I mean, there are some people who may not do regular dental care. So is having the fluoride in the water something that is beneficial for those folks who don't come see the dentist as often as they should? So you raise an excellent point. So yes, lots of ways we can get fluoride. We can get from toothpaste, mouthwash. If you are able to go to the dentist, they can provide you with a fluoride varnish or fluoride treatment with your preventive care. But as you said, a lot of people don't have that access to preventative care or maybe don't have the knowledge to have the best oral hygiene or maybe even not have a toothbrush and toothpaste at home. I know mm. that sounds crazy, but yeah. I run into it all the time. Individuals are either new to this country and so they just aren't familiar with the products we have or kids that for whatever reason don't have a toothbrush or toothpaste at home or at least not one they use very often. Yeah. In that case, access to fluorinated drinking water either at school or at home can really mean the difference in preventing some of that tooth decay. Dr. Nelson, really quickly, can you talk about the work that you do at the Community Dental Clinic? Community uh, Dental Care, I should say. Yeah, Community Dental Care. So we're the largest not-for-profit provider of dental care in the state of Minnesota. Um, we see about 110,000 patient interactions each year. 110,000? 110,000 wow. between our five clinics. Wow. And, and growing, because there's just such a need. Mm -hmm. um, so we see predominantly individuals on the state public programs. As you know, there's such a shortage of providers in our state and yeah. nationwide willing and able to see individuals um, on the state program. So that's predominantly who we see, but we also see the uninsured or quite frankly, anyone who walks through our doors in, in need of care will we'll help them, so. And how do you feel um, you all are helping to solve the dental crisis through the work that you're doing? Yes, so like you said, nationwide and statewide, there's just a huge deficit of individuals able and willing to, to care for those particularly low income. The individuals with low income are twice as likely to suffer dental disease. Mm -hmm. And when they have that dental disease, they don't have timely access to comprehensive dental care. They end up in the emergency room or just having this issue get worse and worse and then it becomes more costly yeah. um, for them to solve. So community dental care does that in a couple ways. One, by having our door open and just being able to see patients in pain, sometimes on a walk-in basis yeah. for emergency care. Right. Mm -hmm. And then also being able to provide that care in a culturally competent way. Our team speak uh, 34 languages wow. total. So we can really meet patients where they are. Where they if are, someone right walks now. in through the door, we don't always have that interpreter ready. Chances are we have someone who can help. and speak to them and to help. Well, Thank unfortunately, so we've got to yeah, yeah, yes, end the conversation you. right yeah. there. But Dr. Nelson, we appreciate your time and what you do here. Yeah, thank yes. you so much for having thank me. You.